Hey everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of Nicole. So, this episode takes place on November 11th, and I'm just going to go ahead and start. Darren's been acting really sketchy ever since we went to watch that movie together. I don't know how to explain it. I feel like he's avoiding me. I watch him out of the corner of my eye as our anthro professor goes on and on about monkeys. He's sitting near the front, away from me. That has to be suspicious, right? Well, the only reason he's sitting there is because he arrived late and other people came and took his usual spots. But Darren is never late. Like, he's usually prompt. And that isn't all. Every time I ask if he wants to hang out, some excuse always manages to pop up. Like, he has school stuff to do, or he's committed to a previous engagement. I grab my hair and sink down in my seat until my chin is resting against the top. This is so weird. I don't like it. The thought of Darren actively avoiding me makes me feel sick to my stomach. I could just be overthinking it. Yeah, that has to be it. I'm making a big deal out of nothing. I'm sure there's a reason why Darren's acting the way he is lately. Anthro ends soon enough, and everyone's packing their stuff away so they can leave. I end up packing my stuff in record time, and I'm by Darren's side before he can escape. Darren! Hello, Nicole. Darren zips up his backpack and turns in his seat to face me. Did you need something? Um, did I? I know I came over here, but it was only to see if he would even bother talking to me. Wait, I got it! We have that test coming up soon, so I was going to ask if you wanted to study together. In all honesty, I could use Darren's help. He has more of a natural knack for learning this stuff than I do. When would you like to? Hmm, would today work? I'm afraid not. I have an engagement later off campus this afternoon, but I'm free the day after tomorrow if that is acceptable. Yeah, definitely. I can do that. See me? If he was avoiding you, he wouldn't have made plans at all. I'm in much higher spirits as I say bye to Darren and leave the room. My next class is in for two hours, which leaves me with a small break, not that I plan on spending it productively. This is going to sound really cheesy, but I can't stop thinking about Darren. I know I toyed with the idea of liking him, but I'm sure about it now. I really like Darren. But here comes the age-old problem. Does he like me back? Frankly, I have no idea. I never was any good at this relationship thing. I never dated in high school, and I never really had any interest in boys or stuff like that. All of it feels so new to me. It's nice and exciting, but it's a little scary at the same time. What to do? I keep thinking about it. I keep thinking about it through the two-hour break, and eventually through my English class. There's at least one obvious thing I know. I'm going to have to tell Darren how I feel eventually. And for how and when, I'm still working on that. At the end of the day, I eventually find myself in the school library. I really was planning on studying today. I figure coming here will make that process slightly less painful. I find an empty seat, plop myself down, and focus on something other than Darren. And his eyes. And his smile. Yeah, I definitely need a distraction right now. A few hours pass and I lose myself in the process of highlighting and underlining my notes. So this is different from this because of... Oh, the process of excavating is different. I happily highlight that important feature with a swipe of yellow. That makes one less thing to worry about. And like, a million more things left. I made some good progress though. Enough to call this study session a success. I lean back in my chair and quietly stretch my arms into the air, interlacing my fingers as my hands go as high as they can. I sigh and relax, then suddenly tense up again. From a distance, I see a familiar person head into one of the aisles. And I'm sure I know that curly hair from somewhere. Was that Darren? I keep my voice to a whisper. We're in a library, after all. However, my mind goes busy as several thoughts stream through my head. The loudest one is the one I don't want to acknowledge. Was Darren lying to me when he said he was busy before? I hurriedly begin to put my stuff away. Every second my butt is stuck in the seat is a second wasted. I have to find out for sure if that was Darren or not. As soon as I stuff my notebook and my pen in my bag, I rush off from the table and down the aisle I saw the figure disappear down. I don't see him stopping to look at the rows of books. I figure he must have already passed this place. 
I keep going past the aisle, searching around furtively. Suddenly, I spot the figure I saw heading down the stairs to the second floor. It's unmistakable. It really is Darren. I can't believe it. I feel like a large hand has gripped my chest so it's harder to breathe. He said he was going to be off campus today. Maybe he hasn't left yet. And he's going now? I guess there's only one way to check. Though it makes me feel like the biggest sneak. Then again, I've been stalking Darren through the bookshelves for the past few minutes now. I'm sure I already passed into creeper territory a long time ago. I pull my phone out and text Darren, asking how his off-campus thing is going. I simultaneously follow him down the stairs, keeping my distance so I'm not too obvious. Please say you haven't gone yet. Please have a reasonable explanation for this. My heart drops as my phone rumbles and I read the text I get back. Darren says that it's going well and that he may be preoccupied for a little while longer. So does this mean he was lying to me? He was totally lying to me. Hey, I can't believe it. Why did he lie to me? If he didn't want to study with me, he could have just said he wasn't in the mood. All right, I'm officially annoyed. And with Darren so close by, I'm going to let him know I'm in on his sneaky little ways. I hurry to a hopefully inconspicuous jog as I see him leave the library. Good. It means less people will hear my loud voice if it comes to that. Ugh, confrontations make my stomach hurt. I get outside and Darren is walking away. Not anymore. Darren! Other people turn as they hear me shout, but look away as soon as they see I found the person I'm after. On the other hand, Darren freezes in place at the sound of my voice. He doesn't even turn to look at me. I stop behind him, doing my best to keep my cool. There's still a chance he has a reason for being here. I can't yell before he has a chance to explain himself. Darren, I know that's you. Cheese. It's not like you're even wearing a disguise. Darren sighs and slowly turns about face, shoulders hunched and about ready to cover his ears. N nicole I, I didn't know you were there. I figured. I thought you were supposed to be off campus. Darren flinches as I point out his lie. Y yes, I did say that, didn't I? So why are you still here? Well, um, that is to say... Darren flounders for an excuse, and I figure the most merciful thing I can do is cut to the chase. Darren, are you avoiding me? The question hits him as hard as a blow, and he recoils from how suddenly I spring that on him. There's only silence as I wait to hear his answer, holding my breath. I am. Now I feel like the one who just got punched in the face. So when you told me that you were going to be busy today, you were lying? Darren only nods. And all those other times that you said you were busy, were those lies too? Another nod, and I feel like I'm going to be sick. Why? I lift my hand to massage my temple. I don't understand what's going on right now. Did I do something to annoy you? If I did, you could have told me. I know I can get annoying sometimes. I try to laugh everything off like it's no big deal, but honestly... It really hurts to find out that Darren, of all people, was trying to avoid me. You didn't do anything like that, Nicole. Then what is it? Tell me, Darren. I want to fix whatever I did to bother you. Darren stares down at the ground again. He screws his eyes shut so tightly that he begins to quiver, then suddenly exhales and turns around. I, I cannot. Please, I must go. What? Darren's off before I realize what's going on. Darren, no, tell me! I chase after him and reach out, grabbing him by the crook of his arm and yanking him back toward me. I don't expect him to shove me off in response. Heck, I didn't know he was capable of being so strong. I stagger back a few steps, and Darren just stares at me with a livid look in his eyes. Do not come after me, Nicole. His voice is louder than I've ever heard him sound before. I can only stare at him with wide eyes, wondering who the heck this guy is standing in front of me. I mean it. Please. Please. Do not come talk to me. Do not come near me. I need... I need some time away from you. Darren backs up to put some distance between us, but he isn't watching where he's going and manages to trip over his own feet. I gasp as he falls on his butt, hands covering my mouth. I approach to try and help him, but he holds out a hand. Nicole, don't. 
What did I just say? Well, you fell on your butt, you idiot. I'm not going to just leave you there. He doesn't look like he's about to listen to me, though. So now we've got options. Help him, don't help him. And just for the way he's acting, I am not going to help him. Haha! -ha. Darren's made it perfectly clear what he expects from me. And that's to stay away. It's a killer watching him get on his feet as I just stand there. But I know it's what I have to do. Darren wobbles as he's finally standing, but eventually manages to stabilize himself. Not once does he look at me. It's like I'm not even there. After dusting himself off, Darren takes one last look at my shoes before he turns. Goodbye. I don't say anything back. I don't know what to say. And I don't even know if I want to talk to him right now. He obviously doesn't want to talk to me. I sniff a little and blink hard, so I don't do anything embarrassing in public other than force myself to leave in the opposite direction. I want to yell at him so badly. I want to tell him that he sucks, and that I can find way better friends than him. But as much as I want to, I know it would only make me feel worse later. I wouldn't mean a thing I was saying. I feel my phone vibrate again, and I almost don't answer it from how crappy I feel. I decide checking it won't hurt, and I do just that. It's from Darren, and it only has one word. Sorry. I stare at the tiny screen of my phone for a moment before putting it to sleep and shoving it deep, deep within my bag. Whatever. Guess whose number is getting deleted. Okay. Um, well that's the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to see more, just click the I at the top and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching.